Hello students and welcome to the next chapter in Botany that is Principles of Inheritance and Variation. It is the first chapter in the section Genetics and in this chapter we are going to cover principles related to inheritance, Mendelian inheritance, chromosome theory of inheritance, gene interaction, incomplete dominance, co-dominance, complementary genes, multiple allergies, linkage and crossing over, inheritance patterns of hemophilia and blood groups in human beings, some other related topics along with a few examples to clarify these concepts. So let's begin with principles of inheritance and variation. All of us have observed in nature that a cow will always give birth to a calf and not a kitten. Similarly, a pea plant will always produce pea pods and not tomatoes. In other words, we can say that the offspring are always similar to their parents. So the transmission of the characteristics from the parent to the offspring is known as heredity. Although most of the characteristics of an offspring are like that of its parents, some differences are still observed. The degree by which the offspring differs from its parent is known as variation. These similarities and variations are studied under the branch of science which we call as genetics. So we can define genetics as the branch of science related to the study of genes or the study of heredity and variations. Those characteristics or traits that are inherited by the offspring from the parent are known as heritable traits. For example, the eye color in the human beings. The transmission of these heritable traits from the parent to the offspring takes place through certain carriers which are known as genes. Mandel called these genes as factors. The complete set of genes of an organism's genome is known as its genotype. But all the traits of an organism do not depend on its genotype. There are certain traits which develop as a result of the interaction of the organism's genotype with its environment. That complete set of such observable traits of an organism is known as its phenotype. For example, the skin color of a person. It depends on the genotype as well as the exposure to the sun. Although significant work was done by the scientist Mandel in this field of genetics, there were many theories prevalent before his time. Selective breeding of plants and animals was practiced since as early as 8000 BC. Though the scientific basis of this phenomenon was not known to them completely. For example, the breed of Sahiwal cows in Punjab was developed long ago. One of such theories that were prevalent before Bandel's laws of inheritance was the theory of blending inheritance. According to this hypothesis, the inherited trait of the offspring is determined randomly from a range bound by the homologous traits of the parents. For example, the height of an offspring will be somewhere intermediate between the height of the parents. The second theory was the inheritance of the acquired characters, which is also known as theory of adaptation or Lamarckism. It was proposed by a French scientist, Jean-Baptiste Lemarque. It was based on the ideas of Hippocrates and Aristotle. It consists of two parts. The first part is the theory of use and disuse, according to which those body parts of the organism which are used more often become stronger and larger, whereas those body parts not used slowly degenerate and then eventually disappear. The second part is the inheritance of acquired characters. The physiological traits acquired by an organism during its lifetime are transmitted to its offspring. Lamarck gave the example of giraffe. He believed that the ancestors of the giraffe had shorter neck. Due to the constant stretching of the neck to reach the leaves on higher branches, their necks became longer and longer. He also gave the examples of the vestigial organs of the human beings which became vestigial over the time due to their constant disuse. Another important pre-Mendelian theory was the theory of pengenesis. 
this hypothesis was proposed by the scientist Charles Darwin. According to it, all the body cells of an organism shed gemmules, which get collected in the reproductive organs of the organism. These gemmules are then passed on to the offspring through sexual reproduction, where they determine the traits of the offspring. This idea was reversed upon by another scientist, Francis Galton. A German Czech monk, Gregor John Mandel, studied inheritance in pea plants, whose botanical name is Python sativum. He experimented on pea plants because they are easy to cultivate, they produce numerous offspring on mating, they are capable of self-fertilization and they have a number of varieties. Mandel chose seven traits of the pea plants that can be easily observed, such as seed shape, smooth or wrinkled, which we can say spherical or dented also, Seed color, yellow or green. Flower color, purple or white. Pod shape, inflated or constricted. Pod color, green or yellow. Flower position, axial or terminal. And stem height, tall or dwarf. Mandel experimented on a set of pure breeding plants, that is those plants whose characters in the second generation were consistent with those of the parents. These plants were denoted by P, that is parents. Their offsprings were denoted by F1, that is first filial generation and the next generation is F2, that is second filial generation and so on. Mandel performed a monohybrid cross between two pure breeding plants, that is those plants differed only in a single trait. One plant was tall and the other was dwarf. He found that all the F1 plants were tall. Based on these results, Mendel postulated the law of dominance, which states that in a cross of parents that are pure, that is homozygous for a contrasting trait, only one trait will appear in the next generation. The trait that appeared in the S1 generation is termed as the dominant trait. For example, tall stem in this case. And the trait that was not expressed in the F1 generation was termed as the recessive trait, which is dwarf stem in this example. By performing monohybrid cross for various traits, Mandel found out which of the characters are dominant and which of the characters or traits are recessive in nature. For example, for stem height, tall is dominant and dwarf is recessive. For flower position, axial is dominant whereas terminal is recessive. For seed shape, smooth is dominant and wrinkled or dented is recessive. For seed color, Yellow color is dominant over the recessive green color. For seed coat color, gray is dominant over white. For pot shape, inflated is dominant whereas constricted is recessive. And for pot color, green is dominant whereas yellow is recessive. 